While Eric Cartman is South Park's most popular and recognizable character, Randy Marsh is arguably number two. The father of Stan and Shelley and husband of Sharon, Randy was originally the town's fairly level-headed geologist. As the show progressed, he quickly became one of the town's most erratic, unpredictable, and irrational residents. Someone with a personality such as this is bound to have a repertoire of shenanigans up their belt, and Randy is certainly no exception. But out of all the many crazy things Randy has done, not including the cameo in Chip and Dale Rescue Rangers, which deeds are the most noble and which are the most reprehensible? Let's find out. I'm Caleb with Wicked Binge, and this is Randy Marsh Deeds Good to Evil. As usual, we're starting out with the best deeds and working our way down. First, we have the good category. Randy gets the gold medal of good for joining Finger Bang. In the episode, Something You Can Do With Your Finger, the boys, along with Wendy, create a boy band called Finger Bang, and they have been given 20 minutes to perform at their own designated corner in the mall. Randy is initially livid at the thought of Stan being in a boy band and refuses to take him, as he had a bad experience being in a boy band himself. After having a heart-to-heart -heart talk with Stan, though, he changes his mind and takes him to the mall to perform. However, as Cartman is introducing their act, Kenny gets crushed by a nearby elevator. They think they're screwed as they need five members, but Randy is kind enough to take Kenny's place. This was a rather wholesome thing for Randy to do, plus he got to bond with his son. We don't get many moments like this with Randy, so this more than deserves the Gold Medal of Good. The Silver Medal of Good goes to helping destroy the Walmart. In Something Walmart This Way Comes, a Walmart opens up in South Park and quickly engulfs and overwhelms the town. More people are flocking to their shop, leaving many small businesses in the dust and a good chunk of the town almost inhabited. After a boycott and a fire, it still doesn't go away and only doubles down on its discounts. The boys learn that in order to destroy the Walmart for good, they have to find its heart. Randy leads Stan and Kyle to the heart, only to succumb to some good discounts, but thankfully throws the boys the keys needed to unlock it before he goes. This gets the silver medal as this is Randy at his most heroic, helping defend the town from a legitimate threat. The bronze medal of good goes to leading the town during the recession. In Margaritaville, Randy manages to convince enough people that he can lead the town during the economic recession. Everyone sticks to my new plan. In order to combat all the frivolous spending, he rallies the town to wear sheets instead of buying clothes, ride llamas as opposed to cars, and have the kids play with squirrels instead of video games for fun. Additionally, he has people guard the malls to stop people from buying dumb stuff and has others do house checks to stop any needless online spending. It all ends when Kyle pays off everyone's debts. Even though reverting to a near primal society was going perhaps a bit overboard, this shows that Randy is able to lead a whole town during trying times. Next we have starting a house renovating show. In the episode, White People Renovating Houses, Randy starts a house renovating show of the same name. He does the dirty work while Sharon is his assistant who does the designing and decorating. The show repeatedly gets disturbed by Daryl and the other rednecks marching down the street angry at Amazon, claiming their devices like Alexa's tick their germs, tick their germs. So, Randy comes up with the idea of having the rednecks becoming the devices, making it a win-win situation for everyone. After Daryl rebels, Randy tells him to open his mind and that walls must be taken down. Daryl reveals he can't knock down the wall in his kitchen because otherwise his house would collapse. In response, Randy completely renovates his house, making it much nicer and much more vibrant, much to Daryl's delight. This deed gets this high of placement as it is once again another rare kind gesture from Randy. We have solving the spontaneous combustion problem next. 
and the appropriately named spontaneous combustion, Randy makes it his duty to figure out why this phenomenon is happening after Kenny randomly explodes. Upon hearing that Kenny had been seeing a new girlfriend, and after a woman in town can bust as she was about to visit her partner, Randy puts together a theory. His theory is that people don't want to pass gas while in front of their partner, so it builds up inside, leading to a risk of explosion. This discovery awards Randy a medal and gets a statue of himself erected, leading to a heavily stroked ego. However, Randy indirectly causes a heat wave in the entire town as the methane from people's farts causes the ozone layer to heat up. The town gangs up on him, but he eventually comes to the conclusion that people should fart in moderation. Not too often to cause a heat wave, but not too little to spontaneously combust. Sure, the heat wave thing wasn't cool, but there's no way Randy would have known about it. But since he stopped people from exploding, we're placing it here. Ending off the good category is helping the boys in World of Warcraft. In the episode, Make Love, Not Warcraft, Randy is one of many people to jump into the Warcraft craze. One player has been playing the game non-stop to the point where he is overleveled and breaking the game, killing everyone in sight. Not even the heads at Blizzard can stop him. This leads to the boys grinding for XP for weeks on end, becoming more and more overweight. The reps at Blizzard, noticing what the boys are up to, decided that they are worthy of the Sword of a Thousand Truths, a weapon otherwise so powerful it was removed from the game. They arrive at Stan's house and give the USB containing the sword to Randy. With Stan in possession of the home computer in Cartman's basement, Randy carjacks a man to get to a Best Buy to use one of their computers. With the boys quickly running out of resources, Randy arrives at the Best Buy, pushing a kid out of the computer chair to log into Warcraft. Just in the nick of time, he hands the sword to Stan in-game, sacrificing his avatar in the process. This gets the lowest spot in the good category because while he aided in saving World of Warcraft, Randy did commit a carjacking and potentially hurt a kid. But at the end of the day, this is South Park we're talking about. It's now time for our final category which highlights the most evil deeds that Randy has committed. These are Randy's bad and evil deeds. We start this category off with working as a mall security guard. Randy does this in the Black Friday trilogy where he claims it's for extra holiday cash, but in reality, he only got the job so he could be first in line for all the deals. Randy's boss sees potential in him, so he is made his replacement as he dies from a stab wound caused by someone too eager to get in. In this new role, Randy is surprisingly competent. But for whatever reason, he kills a rookie with a bow and arrow at one point. Maybe this was for dramatic effect to fit the Game of Thrones tone of the trio of episodes, but it was still not cool. Just when things are getting deadly, he leaves his men behind to go to the Red Robin where he thinks Tom Hanks and Beyonce are getting married to save them from the shoppers. However, it turns out that it's the boys staging a fight between Bill Gates and the president of Sony for the console wars. This deed lands the highest in the gray area because while Randy did leave his men to die and even killed one of them himself, he did a good job in preparing them for the onslaught of people on Black Friday and was willing to save the lives of Tom Hanks and Beyonce even though they weren't naturally there. The first of several straight up dumb and petty things Randy has done is causing fights with other dads. In the episode The Losing Edge, Randy continuously became drunk and picked fights with dads of boys on the opposing teams at Stan's Little League games, leading him to get arrested with almost no clothes on each time. However, he meets his match with Bad Dad at Denver. Their fight interrupts the game, and he gets South Park disqualified as a result of him dealing the finishing blow, much to the delight of the boys so they don't have to spend the entire summer playing baseball. South Park is disqualified! While he was far from a hero in this situation, he certainly was one in the eyes of the boys. Next up is getting unauthorized internet access. 
In overlogging, nearly the entire country, including South Park, loses internet access, and with rumors of internet left out in Silicon Valley, Randy takes his family on a trip out there. At the internet refugee camp, everyone has to wait their turn to go online, and only have 40 seconds of use per person. Desperate for adult content, Randy sneaks into the building the computer is locked in overnight and, well, you put two and two together. Not only was this entire scene disgusting, but it was unfair of him to hog all of that internet for himself. We have Leading a Double Life as Lord next. This is a major plot point all throughout season 18. The episode The Sissy revealed that Randy started his career as the New Zealand-born singer after he started using the woman's bathroom at work. He explains to Stan that he records himself singing and later auto-tunes it to make himself sound like a woman. In Hashtag Rehash, his lord persona is one of several female pop stars to play at a concert where he gets into an argument with Iggy Azalea backstage after an argument about their bodies. Once it's his turn to perform, he plays live where all his young fans finally hear who he actually is and boo him off stage in response. This is a weird situation. We have no idea why Randy decided to lead this double life, but he wasn't hurting himself or others. This one's just the definition of neutral. Next is trying to prove he is Native American. In the episode Holiday Special, Randy does everything in his power to protest Christopher Columbus. This ranges from having a Columbus statue torn down, to canceling Columbus Day, to even calling random strangers racist by merely living in places like Columbus, Ohio. However, when Stan and Kyle show him photos of him dressed as Columbus when he was younger, he thinks his reputation will be ruined until he sees a commercial for a DNA test. So he pays a Native American man to make out with him, so some of his saliva would get on the swab, making it seem like Randy has Native American blood. Unfortunately for Randy, the Native American man keeps coming back, thinking he has romantic feelings for him. Just when he finally told the man to never return, the people from the testing facility come back for a retest because of the irregularities. So, when he managed to catch the man one more time for a makeout session, he thought he was all set. This time though, they had an anal swap much to Randy's dismay. Randy then tried to sneak into the facility to steal his DNA specimen, which failed when he got caught and wasn't seen as suspicious despite the spy garb. He did ultimately learn his test results in the end, which found that he was 2.8% Neanderthal. This was just another petty deed from Randy in our eyes, and his inner Neanderthal truly does come out here. We get to what is possibly his most infamous deed, saying the n-word on live national TV next. In the episode, with apologies to Jesse Jackson, Randy makes it to the bonus round on a game of Wheel of Fortune. He is one letter short of winning $30,000, with the category being people who annoy you. With the clock counting down, an initially hesitant Randy eventually drops the N-bomb right then and there. Of course, the word turned out to be completely different. Up next is purposely giving himself testicular cancer. In medicinal fried chicken, a KFC in town is replaced with a place that sells marijuana, and Randy is ecstatic. The catch? It's for medicinal purposes only, meaning he would have to get a doctor's referral showing that he is sick. Considering he's completely healthy, he does anything he can to get himself terminally ill so he can get high. He eventually decides to put his genitals in the microwave to get testicular cancer on purpose. Later, he gets the other guys to do it as well so they can get high together. Let me tell you something else. As a result of the cancer, their testicles become gigantic, requiring them to bounce on them to get around. When their tumors get bigger, none of the guys can get their weed anymore because they can't fit through the doors. 
So they begin demanding that the weed shops make the doors bigger to accommodate them. Not only was Randy risking death just to get pot, he was also encouraging the other guys to do it too, also putting their lives at risk. Next is berating his boss while drunk. In the episode about last night, Randy is one of many adults that parties out in the streets and gets drunk when Barack Obama wins the 2008 presidential election. During the celebrations, he berates his boss in a vulgar manner and even punches him in the face. His thinking while drunk was that Obama's promises of hope and change would mean that he would be financially secure for the rest of his life. When he awakes from his hangover the next morning, however, he discovers that nothing changed at all and he was fired from his job. Dad, your boss called. He said you're fired. This gets a spot here because while this was a pretty bad deed, he was under the influence which altered his judgment. Up next is buying a blockbuster. In A Nightmare on FaceTime, Randy claims that he and his family are rich after he bought Blockbuster for $10,000. The problem is, video rental stores are pretty much dead, with streaming taking over, and the marshes get no customers. On Halloween night, Stan is ready to go trick-or-treating, but Randy tells everybody to stay, expecting a big night with people flocking over to buy scary movies. As a loophole, Stan and Kyle connect to each other's iPads through FaceTime so the former could still come even if he's not physically there. Randy, meanwhile, goes full Jack Torrance from The Shining when he sees the ghost of a Blockbuster employee tell him to do something about Stan and Sharon, blaming them for ruining the business. He takes his family's devices away along with the car keys, takes control of Stan's iPad, and begins terrorizing the town at the Monster Mash. Randy is angered even more when Shelly burns down the Blockbuster and falls into the snow where he is found frozen the next morning. This only gets this spot because the damage he causes to the town isn't too huge in the grand scheme of things. But buying Blockbuster did make him and his family lose quite a bit of money. We have Becoming the School Chef next. In Crime Frage, after becoming unhealthy obsessed with the Food Network, Randy becomes the chef of South Park Elementary, all while thinking he can become a celebrity chef and putting a strain on his marriage with Sharon. He makes the kids go hungry at lunchtime because he wants to perfect his dishes, only stopping when he forgets his crime freeze while cooking against celebrity chefs, and Sharon ultimately convinces him to no longer continue while in bed. I'm gonna go to sleep, babe. While not downright evil, it gets a placement here, as making kids starve would land someone in jail if this wasn't the South Park universe. Up next is making Stan cheat at the Pinewood Derby. In the episode of the same name, Randy doesn't want him and Stan to lose another Pinewood Derby, so he forces him to cheat by putting a mysterious particle inside the car. In doing this, Randy accidentally discovers warp speed when the car shoots into space and an alien becomes so impressed that it wants Earth to join the Galactic Federation of Planets. In this ordeal, he gets himself tied up with all the world leaders in helping represent Earth, which is a whole other can of worms in itself. I happen to be on the phone with all the world leaders. While Randy never would have known that cheating at the Derby would lead to this whole alien fiasco, he shouldn't have stolen this strange particle in the first place, not knowing what it was capable of. Not to mention, the whole ordeal gets Finland bombed out of existence. Now we get to starting the COVID-19 pandemic. The pandemic special reveals that sometime while Randy was in China, he and Mickey Mouse got high and took turns having sex with a bat. This memory came back to him after he heard on the news that COVID was discovered to have been from a bat in Wuhan. He also remembered that after he came back home, he came down with what he thought was the flu. Later, a scientist on the news made a discovery that COVID didn't come from a bat, which made Randy think he was in the clear. No bat involved! Oh yeah! Oh yeah! But when he said it came from a Panagolian instead, Randy remembered that he and Mickey also had sex with said creature. This effectively makes him the catalyst of an entire global pandemic. Nobody yet knew COVID even existed while Randy was in China, so we won't fault him for that, but any sane person wouldn't have sex with animals. 
We next have Killing Glenn for Being Homeless. In Night of the Living Homeless, homeless people invade South Park like zombies, asking people for change until they too run out and become one of them. With this situation getting worse and worse, a group of people become trapped on the roof of the community center. Glenn, a city council member, eventually gets signal on his phone and calls his wife to ask her what's happening. I'm calling my wife! She tells him that because of the homeless, property rates in South Park have gone down and thus their house is being foreclosed, which means that he is now homeless. Not much later, Glenn starts to ask for change, which causes Randy to shoot him in the head, fearing that the homelessness will spread to everyone else on the roof. While this would normally go to the bad to evil category, this is South Park logic once again. Plus, this is akin to a zombie invasion, so you would want to kill a zombie near you. Rounding out the gray area is breaking into a theater as Spider-Man. In the episode Broadway Brodown, Sharon gave Shelly two tickets to see Wicked with her new boyfriend, Larry Fegan. I gave her those tickets to Wicked. She's seeing it with her little boyfriend. Hearing this news, Randy drives there with her to get Shelly out, not wanting her to hear the play's subtext, which would have her act on a sexual urge. He gets dragged out by ushers when he disturbs the playgoers, but when he sees a costume shop, he does the next logical thing, steal a Spider-Man costume. He swings around inside the theater, causing enough chaos to cancel the play. To make things even worse, he broke the main water line, flooding the place and drowning Larry, leaving Shelly heartbroken. Not only did Randy steal, commit a breaking and entering, and destroy an entire building, he also indirectly killed an innocent young boy. What prevents this from dropping any lower is the fact that he only had his daughter's best interests at heart. Starting off this category is driving drunk. In the episode Bloody Mary, Randy is out getting a couple beers while Stan, Kyle, Ike, and Cartman are in karate class. The thing is, he has to drive them home. At one point while driving, he even has Stan hold the wheel while he pees in an empty bottle. And of course, he gets pulled over by the cops and gets arrested. What? What'd I do? What'd I do? Not only is driving drunk one of the worst things a person could do in today's society, Randy had four kids in the car. So, if he wasn't stopped by the cops, he could have possibly gotten all of them seriously injured, if not killed. Up next is cutting a man's hand off. In My Future Self and Me, Randy and Sharon hire an actor, pretending to be a washed up Stan from the future, to use as an example to show how their son will look if he does drugs. In the latter half of the episode, Stan says he will cut off his own hand with a meat cleaver to see if the hand of his future self disappears as well. I'm going to cut off my hand. Stan fakes it by receding his hand into his sleeve, but to keep the facade going, Randy, without hesitance, chops the man's hand off as if they really are binded through time. This really needs no further explanation. Next is destroying a vape store. In Tegrity Farms, Randy learns that another farmer is selling his crops to the vaping market, and he gets all the more pissed when Sharon tells him Stan was caught with a vape pen. Yeah, right. My own son using a pussy stick. At Big Vape Colorado, Randy fights the vapors inside to get the valves containing the e-liquid. A man tries to stop him, almost winning against him in a fight just for Towley to smother him. Afterwards, Randy opens all the valves and drops a lit joint, destroying the place. This is not the only time Randy has committed arson, as we will see very soon, but this one gets a higher placement because of the fact that it appears nobody died. The Bronze Medal of Evil goes to taking the FedEx hostage. In the episode TMI, Randy ends up in the same anger management group that Cartman is put in earlier on in the episode. He gets so angry while there that he burns the entire place down with the group rallied behind him. Things only get worse when they go into a FedEx building and destroy the place while taking the employees hostage. While being interviewed by a news reporter, Randy claims that they are there to take their anger out on the federal government. We want that Surgeon General to step down! This statement only makes Randy look like an ass when he is told that FedEx has no relation to the federal government. 
This gets the bronze medal because this time he's committed both arson and attempted murder. And if this were an actual federal building, this also would have been domestic terrorism. The silver medal of evil goes to murdering Winnie the Pooh. In Banned in China, Randy attempts to express his weed business to China, but gets arrested when the people at customs discover the weed in his suitcase. He is brought to a prison and eventually meets Winnie the Pooh and Piglet, who are doing time simply because the stuffed bear looks like the Chinese president. Later, when Mickey Mouse thinks one of his characters criticized the Chinese government, Pooh points out it was Randy defending him, which has now put Disney's business dealings in the country on a timer. With both of their brands at stake, Mickey and Randy go to a government tribunal to try and make a deal with them. The government does not budge because they are still angry about Pooh. It's the bear! They're still pissed off! As a means to show the government they understand, Randy lures Pooh and Piglet into a dark alleyway with honey so he can brutally choke the former to death with a cable. It is here where Randy commits actual murder, premeditated at that. This only gets silver medal though because of the simple fact that he does far worse in the last entry. Finally, we give Randy the gold medal of evil for destroying people's weed gardens. In the episode Mexican Joker, Tegrity Farms is only getting bigger and bigger, and upon learning that some of his customers like Stephen Stotch and Mr. Mackey are growing their own weed, Randy is livid. You're stealing my idea, Stephen! He wants to be the only supplier of weed in South Park, so he won't keep losing money. So, in the dead of night, he sneaks into the homegrown weed gardens and lights them on fire, with one man literally being blown up. Randy commits the two worst things he has previously done, arson and murder, at the exact same time. This is why this deed gets the gold medal of evil. But let us know in the comment section if you agree with our ranking, and tell us what we should cover next. Remember to hit that notification bell and binge our Good to Evil playlist, where we break down the morality of the characters in your favorite cartoons, shows, and movies. But most importantly, stay wicked.